Olivia felt the weight of the family history on her shoulders and she suddenly inherited Montgomery Enterprises after her father passed away. She was determined to honor her father's memory and keep the business going, even though she was a young lady with pale skin and long brown hair. But her lack of experience and the expected changes in the market made things hard for the company in many ways. Olivia answered the questions of the people in the room at a shareholder meeting. She wore a navy blue blazer and looked determined. She said she was determined to lead the company to success and understood how important it was to put together the right team. Olivia chose Marcus Greenfield, who had an impressive resume and almost 20 years of work experience, after a lot of study in interviews. Marcus looked like the best choice. He had sharp eyes, short graying hair, and a sure stance. Olivia told Marcus that she had full faith in his ability to lead the company in the right direction when he was introduced to the team. Marcus shook hands with each team member and said it was an honor to work for Montgomery Enterprises and that everyone was committed to making the company better. But as the weeks went by, it became clear that Marcus's drive to succeed often got in the way of his commitment to the team. He often tried to be the center of attention in meetings, ignoring other people's thoughts and focusing on his own. Olivia talked to Marcus in her office, which was bathed in the golden light of the sunset, after a tense meeting. She praised his skills but emphasized how important it was to work together, pointing out that the company is based on respect and cooperation. Marcus was surprised by the feedback, so he defended himself by saying that he was doing what was best for the company. Olivia looked Marcus in the eyes and told him she understood what he was trying to do. She also reminded him that Montgomery Enterprises lived on teamwork and mutual respect. This talk brought up an ongoing problem for Olivia, balancing experience and ego as the company grows. This made her more alert. It became clear that the person she hired to help the business grow shouldn't put its success at risk. Montgomery Enterprises had a hard time every day fixing the problem of a lot of workers leaving. Now, the business was looking for a flexible cleaner, and Adam Mitchell stood out because he could do fixes and maintenance on paper. In any case, there was a note in the small print of Adam's resume that made the HR team nervous, he was a former prisoner on parole. Olivia stood behind a big, dark wooden table during the interview and looked deeply into Adam's eyes, which were a mix of fear and hope. In response to the news, she said that his resume was impressive but that he hadn't tried to hide his background. Adam thought for a moment before answering. He said that the truth always comes out, and he wanted to get things off to a good start, even if it meant facing his biases. Olivia felt moved by his honesty and chose to give him a chance, even though her advisors told her not to. From the very first day, she told him she expected the best from him. Adam was very careful and did everything with great care, from cleaning the big windows that look out over the city to fixing leaks and replacing burned-out light bulbs. But behind his back, there were whispers and laughter all over the building. The team often made fun of his jail slang and odd habits, like checking doors twice to make sure they were locked. While Adam was working on a light fixture, he heard two co-workers talking. He learned that they were wondering if they could trust a former prisoner to fix their house because they thought he might be looking for a chance to take. Still, he kept working, even though he was angry. Olivia was walking down the hall and heard them talking. She went up to them and told them very clearly that everyone has a past but the present is what makes them who they are. She made it clear that Adam was doing his best for the business right now. Even though Adam kept facing problems, Olivia became an unlikely ally on his path to redemption. As people ate lunch, Adam focused on a scaffold and moved a light fixture in the huge hall of the Montgomery Enterprises building. He could hear other workers walking by. He had no idea that a small group of workers were staring at him and laughing uncontrollably. One secretary made fun of the ex-convict by saying he might be trying to pass himself off as an electrician. Another secretary said he might be planning a blackout so he could steal their desks. The other people laughed, and Adam's shame was clear to see. But Olivia, who was hiding in the hallway, watched the whole thing with a serious face while the others made fun of her. She quickly walked towards the group and said, that's enough, in a strong voice. 
She went on to say that they should rethink their goals if they had so much free time to make fun of a co-worker. Olivia told them that Adam was doing an important job and should be praised for it. Grace took a deep breath, and Ricky looked away, clearly embarrassed. Adam looked at Olivia with thanks while still on the platform and said, Thank you, Mrs. Montgomery. Marcus knocked on Olivia's office door later that same day with a serious face and intense, challenging eyes. He said he was worried about Adam and said Adam might be bad for the company's image. Olivia raised an eyebrow and said, I believe in second chances, while sitting behind her desk. She supported Adam's skills and willingness to work hard, refusing to fire him because of her bias. Marcus knew he couldn't persuade Olivia, so he reluctantly agreed and left. After a few days, most of the workers had left Montgomery Enterprises, but the lights were still on in Olivia's office as dusk fell over the city and rain hit the windows. Adam put his tools away and went outside to the bus stop. Olivia was ending her day when she went outside with her umbrella and saw Adam who was soaked. She called out to him and offered to give her a ride, saying it was terrible outside. Adam was not sure what to do and asked her if she was sure. He looked at her with surprise and thanks. Olivia didn't care about the rules and opened the car door for him, saying it wasn't a bother. As they drove through wet streets, Olivia broke the silence by pointing out that Adam was usually quiet. In order to help people understand him better, she told him he should tell his story. Adam looked out the window and saw the lights of the city mirrored in the water. Before all of this, I had a normal life, he said after taking a big breath. The lawmaker my wife, Anna, was on the rise. She was smart, charming, and sadly very driven. Olivia paid close attention as Adam went on, Anna was involved in a fraud scheme, and when things got tough, she blamed me. I was blamed for all of her scams, and to make things worse, I found out she was seeing Connor, who helped her with all of her scams. I lost everything in an instant because the person I loved most lied to me. The worst thing was that I lost control of my daughter Lily. She got an order to keep me away from her daughter after I was arrested. Now I can't even get close to her. I was a successful financial manager at a big company and had a family. All of a sudden, I lost everything, even my freedom. Olivia got a tighter grip on the driving wheel and said, I'm so sorry, Adam. That shouldn't have to happen to anyone. Olivia said, life throws us curveballs, but I'm trying to rebuild. He gave her a sad half-smile. Olivia, thanks for giving me this chance. With her eyes on the road, she said, everyone deserves a second chance, Adam. Two souls shared times of being vulnerable and understanding while it was pouring rain. The next day, after it rained hard the day before, the sun shined brightly into Marcus's office. Marcus was in a meeting outside the office, but Adam was on the floor putting down some loose tiles. As usual, Marcus's desk was a mess with charts, folders, papers, and pens all over the place. Adam moved one of the pieces on the floor, and a piece of paper fell next to him. He looked at the numbers and events that didn't seem to fit when he picked it up. He quickly skimmed the paper and saw a few transactions that didn't fit with what he knew about the company's finances from his time as a financial analyst before he went to jail. When Adam thought to himself, this doesn't seem right. Why would there be transfers to an unlisted offshore account in the company's finances? He decided to find out more, so he carefully opened one of Marcus's desk drawers while trying to stay out of sight. He found a folder inside called, Personal Projects. He opened it out of curiosity and saw a bunch of papers that supported his thoughts, money that had been taken out and put in personal accounts, fake contracts, and proof of bribery. His heart was beating fast because he knew what he was carrying was dangerous and could put him in a bad spot because of his past. He quickly took pictures of the papers with his phone and put them back where he found them. At the end of the day, he cautiously walked up to Olivia's office and tapped on the door. It was a careful, can I come in? Olivia looked up and nodded when she saw Adam's serious face. With a big breath, he looked at the pictures on his phone and said, of course. What's happened? 
Olivia's face turned pale as she looked at the proof. I found something in Marcus's office. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I think you should see this. Oh my god, this is a scam. She looked up at Adam with thanks and worry in her eyes and said, Thank you, Adam. We need to be careful from here on out. If you were Adam, would you have the guts to tell Olivia the truth, even though you knew she might not believe you and it could hurt you? Please tell us what you really think in the comments. Olivia spent the night carefully looking over every detail of the strange papers she had in her hands. She hired outside experts to confirm her analysis, and as the hours went by, her doubts turned into certainties. Marcus's plan involved stealing a lot of money from the company by taking advantage of his high status. Morning came, and Olivia called Adam into her office. The big windows let in lots of light. Adam, you have no idea what you found. It's millions of dollars, Olivia told him. Adam replied with worry, I suspected, but I had no idea of the magnitude. Olivia quickly called an emergency board meeting. Marcus walked into the conference room with his usual confidence, not knowing about the findings. But as the meeting went on and more proof was shown, he lost all of his color and his face turned pale with shock and fear. When the speaker was done, there was a heavy hush in the room. The silence was broken by Olivia's strong voice. Marcus, your betrayal hurts not only the company but also the people who trusted you. You are fired, and we will represent you in court. Marcus swallowed hard and left the room without saying a word. The next day, an email was sent to every worker. Olivia thanked Adam for being honest and brave in exposing the corruption and told him he was being promoted to vice president. People were surprised at how quickly Adam went from being a simple, jack-of-all-trades, to vice president. There were whispers in the company hallways about this. One of the managers, Megan, said in a break room, where did he come from to be vice president? This is crazy. Another manager, Paul, agreed and said he couldn't believe it either. Once a prisoner, he is now at the top of his field. Though Adam was aware of the looks and whispers, he stood his ground in his first meeting as vice president. When he spoke to the team, he admitted that many of them were surprised by his promotion. I know many of you are surprised by my promotion, but I promise you I will work hard, just like I have since the first day I started here. I only ask for a chance to prove my worth, he said. With each day that went by, Adam dug deeper into the company's complicated records, determined to fix all of Marcus's mistakes and missing information. He set up long working sessions with teams of accountants and lawyers, which often went late into the night, to make sure everything was clear and correct. During one of these late nights, Adam woke up in the conference room with Olivia. He had dark bags under his eyes. There were papers all over the table, and only a desk lamp lit it up. I didn't want the company to suffer any more than it already has because of Marcus, he told her. Olivia told him, Adam, the way you've dedicated yourself to this cause is inspiring. You genuinely care about this company and the people who work there. As their late night meetings went on, they talked about things other than business, like personal stories, dreams, and goals. They laughed together, gave each other advice, and Adam would sometimes lightly touch Olivia's hand as he passed her a paper. Other workers occasionally saw them kissing and embracing, so they knew these private moments were going on. The business began to do well again under Adam's careful guidance and Olivia's inspiring leadership. The employees were more driven, morale was good, and the business started making more money. At the same time, Anna, Adam's ex-wife, saw her life fall apart. People in the city heard that she had filed for personal and professional bankruptcy, and rumors spread that she was involved in political and financial crimes. I heard that Anna is having legal and financial problems. Is that true, Adam? Olivia asked. Adam sighed deeply and said, yes, it is. It seems that wrongdoings always come back to haunt us. Even though I lost many years because of her, I don't wish her harm. Olivia put her hand on Adam's and said, you're an amazing man, Adam, and I'm glad our paths crossed. They looked at each other in a way that meant something, 
showing that their relationship went beyond their jobs. Over the course of the days, Olivia and Adam's relationship became more and more clear. Olivia often found reasons to be close to Adam, whether it was to talk about work or just have coffee together. Their eyes often met and stayed, showing feelings that they didn't say. Olivia carefully went into Adam's office on a cold afternoon. He was sitting down and reading some papers. The room was lit by a dim late afternoon light. She cleared her voice and asked, Adam, do you have plans for tonight? He looked up, confused by the question, and didn't say anything right away. She was determined, so she said, I was thinking maybe we could have dinner. There's a new Italian restaurant downtown that I'd like to try. Adam's face changed from shock to worry. Olivia, I haven't been going out much lately, he told her. Olivia understood why he was hesitant and told him, Adam, it's just a dinner with friends. After everything you've done for the company, I think we both deserve a nice evening. He looked deeply into her eyes and saw that she was honest and understood. All right, Olivia, I'd love to. The place was dreamy at night. They had fun, laughed, told stories, and ate wonderful Italian food. Adam was more at ease with Olivia than he had been in a long time. He told her more about his daughter, his hopes, and his fears. Olivia then talked about how hard it was to run the family business and how lonely it could be. Adam reached for Olivia's hand as he drove her home at the end of the night. Thank you for tonight, Olivia. It meant a lot to me. She grinned, it meant a lot to me too, Adam. Olivia and Adam's relationship grew very quickly. There was laughter in the mornings and deep talks and private confessions in the evenings. Their lives, which used to be very different, were now so intertwined that it was hard to remember that they had ever been apart. As time went on, the relationship went from being business to romantic, and it was clear that this would happen. On a cold night, they watched a love movie while curled up on the couch. After giving it some thought, Adam turned off the TV. He hesitantly told Olivia, I've been thinking about our relationship, working together while dating. I just don't want anything to put what we have at risk. Olivia looked at him, understood his worry, and asked, are you thinking of transferring? His answer was, I think it could be good for us in the long run. Olivia smiled, which surprised Adam. Actually, I have a proposal for you. We're opening a new branch in Boston, and we need a director. Would you like the position? Adam's eyes widening. You would do that for me? It's not just for you, Adam. It's for our future, and you are more than qualified for the job, she said softly. Also, it would be good to start over in a new city, she said. He hugged her tightly and said, thank you, Olivia. This means a lot to me. A few weeks later, Olivia planned a surprise for Adam. Olivia was excited about the move to Boston and the start of a new life. She took him to a rooftop in the middle of the city with wonderful views of the lights. Adam was confused and asked Olivia, what are we doing here? Olivia knelt down, took his hand, and said, Adam, everything has changed for the better since you came into my life. I love you and want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me? Adam was moved to tears and whispered, yes. He then wrapped Olivia in his arms. A million times, yes. The news about Anna kept getting worse over the next few days. Because of the choices she made, she was in a lot of trouble, and Adam saw a chance to get his daughter back. There was a noticeable difference between the calmness inside the building and the sound of rain tapping on the windows. When the judge decided who would have custody of Adam's daughter Lily, he sat up straight with his hands folded. Olivia was by his side and held his hand tightly to show her unwavering love and support. The judge finally spoke. She was a middle-aged woman with graying hair and sharp eyes. After carefully going over all the papers and hearing both sides, I am now giving Mr. Adam Mitchell full custody of Lily. Adam let out a sigh of relief and squeezed Olivia's hand. He whispered, thank you, with tears in his eyes. After that, the days were full of getting ready. 
Adam and Olivia turned one of Lily's rooms in their new house into a safe place for her with soft blue walls, a bookshelf full of books and toys, and a window that looked out over the yard, where bright flowers were starting to bloom. It was magical when Lily finally walked through the front door of that house. She ran through the halls and checked out every corner. Her laughing filled the whole place. That night, they watched a movie together as a family while sharing a bowl of popcorn on the couch. I missed you so much, Daddy, Lily said softly as she cuddled up to Adam. Adam told her, I missed you too, honey, but we're together now, and that's what matters. He kissed her on the forehead. Olivia's heart felt full of love and thanks as she watched the scene. She walked up to them and gave them both a tight hug. We're a family now, she said in a low voice. The days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months. Adam loved simple things like making breakfast for his family, taking Lily to school, and coming home to find Olivia waiting for him with a kiss and a smile. Adam stood on the balcony at night and looked up at the stars. His journey had its ups and downs, and he thought about how life had a funny way of making things right when you least expected it. Olivia jumped in and put her arms around his waist. She asked, what are you thinking? Adam gave her a soft smile and a kiss. About our luck. I found the happiness and redemption I always sought, all thanks to you and Lily.